Welcome back everyone, this is Dr. Herrera and today we're gonna to be talking about the best exercise strategy or the best type of exercise for reversing a fatty liver. So let's begin. In order to identify the best kind of exercise to reverse fatty liver disease, we first have to identify the main goals. Like what are our main goals when we're implementing an exercise strategy for this condition? Now there are a few things that we want to look for and there are a few things we want to focus on when we are working out and we are, when we are implementing an exercise strategy. The first one is obviously the, the number one goal is to burn liver fat. We want to be able to burn that liver fat and that exercise strategy should support that. The next thing is we want to be able to improve insulin resistance, which is really important because insulin resistance is one of the main factors that contribute to the development of a fatty liver, as well as metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, obesity, etc. Next, we want to be able to reduce the circulating glucose in our blood, which is one issue that is very common in fatty liver. When we have too much glucose floating around in our blood because of insulin resistance and because of overconsuming calories, as well as the liver producing new glucose from other substances, uh, which is also known as gluconeogenesis, this is something that we also need to be able to deal with with our exercise strategy. The other thing is we want to be able to reduce the triglycerides in the blood. Many people that have this condition have elevated triglycerides when you go get a blood test from your medical doctor um, or your primary care doctor. So we wanna be able to reduce the amount of fat, right? Triglycerides is another word for fat that are floating around in the blood. The other thing we want to do is improve liver markers like ALT and AST, which is other, uh, which are in liver enzymes that sometimes are elevated when people have a fatty liver disease, which is often found in a blood test, for example. And finally, we want to be able to increase our basal metabolic rate and calorie burning. The basal metabolic rate is simply the amount of calories that you burn just by breathing, just by literally sitting on your couch, how many calories you're burning while doing nothing, right? That's kind of part of what your basal metabolic rate is. Now, according to the research, there are two main types of exercise that are really helpful for reversing a fatty liver disease. The first one is aerobic exercises, and the next one is resistance exercise or resistance training. Now, aerobic exercise is really important. For those of you who don't know what that means, it's basically any kind of exercise that raises your heart rate. For example, running, as you can see in my little stick figure, uh, cycling, right? A lot of people like to cycle for as a form of aerobic exercise, but it's any kind of exercise that gets your heart rate up, that gets your heart pumping. So according to the research in several studies, aerobic exercises like running, sprinting, cycling, for example, are actually really good at burning liver fat, especially when done in moderate intensity which has been shown to improve things like AST and ALT levels in the blood, which are often elevated when someone has a fatty liver or is, is at any stage of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, as well as metabolic syndrome. And there have been several studies that reflect this. For example, in one study, a group of adults was, was taken through a four-week cycling program where they would where they would cycle for three times a week for 30 minutes a pop. So three times a week for 30 minutes. And the end result of that study was that there was actually a reduction in liver fat up to 21% just in four weeks in a month. So you can actually be able to reduce your fatty, your, the fat in the liver by 21%, which is really impressive. The other thing that happened was that there was a reduction in triglycerides in the blood. So there was a reduction in fat in the actual bloodstream, which is one of the main important factors when, when working with fatty liver, because when you have a lot of fat floating around your blood, eventually that fat goes into your liver and gets deposited there. So it's really important to add some kind of aerobic exercise into your overall strategy as part of your treatment plan, um, not just for reversing fatty liver disease, but also for improving your cardiovascular health in general. Now the other form of exercise that the research has shown is really helpful for reversing NAFLD and metabolic syndrome, etc., is resistance exercise or resistance training. Now what is resistance training? Now resistance training involves things like weightlifting in terms of weight or dumbbells, kettlebells for example, resistance bands are another form of weight training, body weight exercises like push-ups, squats, pull-ups, etc. Those are all forms of resistance training. Now the interesting thing about this type of exercise according to the research is that it's not so much helpful in terms of specifically burning liver fat as in the case of aerobic exercises. However, it does improve a lot of the factors that contribute to the development and the progression of fatty liver disease. 
For example, there was a study done where a group of sedentary adults were put through an eight week resistance exercise program. And at the very end of that program, the results showed that there was an increase in insulin sensitivity. So there was actually an improvement in insulin resistance, which is really important. There was also evidence that glucose production in the liver decreased, and there was a less amount of glucose floating around in the blood, which is also really important. Also, there was a decrease in abdominal fat, which is really important because abdominal fat is one of the indicators of a fatty liver. The other thing that happened that was really important to understand is that the increase in muscle strength and muscle size also increased calorie burning, right? So when we build large, not large muscles, but when we, when we start to build muscle, those muscles then require more energy in order to function. It's kind of like upgrading the engine of your car from a V6 to a V8 or a V12. It's going to require more fuel in order to support that, you know, that increase in horsepower. The same thing happens or a similar thing happens to your muscles that as they get bigger, right, as they get stronger, they're actually going to require more calories to actually function, which means that your basal metabolic rate, right, the rate of you burning calories just you know, by sitting in your couch actually goes up because you now need more calories in order to sustain the stronger and larger muscles. The other interesting thing to think about, especially when it comes to insulin sensitivity, is that muscle cells, and I'll draw a muscle cell here in red, muscle cells are, are unique in that the way they absorb glucose is usually insulin dependent, which means that in order for glucose molecules, as you can see here in the blue, to enter the muscle cell, it typically requires insulin to do so because insulin will open up the muscle cell wall and then the glucose will be able to be absorbed from the bloodstream and into the cell. Now, the interesting thing about muscle cells is that their glucose transporters or the little doorways that they open up in order to bring glucose into the cell are found actually inside of the cell itself instead on the surface, like in the case of pretty much every other insulin sensitive uh, cell. Now, when you're insulin resistant, it makes it harder for glucose to actually enter the cell as we know. However, with muscles, when you contract muscle cells, when you do resistance training and you're contracting muscle cells, that'll push the transporter all the way to the surface, right? In this case, on this side, which will then allow glucose to enter the cell. So you're actually manually reversing the insulin resistance with your muscle cells every time you work out in a resistance training fashion, like when you're doing weights or resistance bands or body weight training, for example. Now, if we go back to our original goals list, you'll notice that we've actually achieved all of our different goals by the combination of aerobic exercise and resistance exercise. Because if you look at the list again, the burning of liver fat takes place and is covered by aerobic exercises, the improvement of insulin resistance usually gets covered through resistance exercise, like how we explained with the muscle cell and how the contraction helps improve insulin sensitivity. The, we reduce the circulating amount of glucose in resistance training. We've covered the reduction of triglycerides in the blood or the fat in the blood. Same thing with the liver markers. And we are also increasing our BMR. So the combination of these two exercises actually covers a lot of ground when it comes to reversing fatty liver. Now, one last thing I wanna cover before I end this video is the incorporation of rehab and corrective exercise before you try to attempt some kind of resistance or aerobic exercise training program, especially if you haven't worked out in a long time. And this is really important because when you do a rehab and corrective exercise program prior to starting something, you'll help prevent injury, you'll improve your mobility, you'll help cor correct any issues with uh, joint function or, or muscle pain or joint pain. And overall, it'll increase the effectiveness of the workout because uh, you'll feel better, you'll move easier, and you'll most likely stick to the program for a longer period of time. And if you guys are interested in, in me putting together a basic corrective exercise routine, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. So hopefully you learned something today about exercise and how to best incorporate aerobic exercises and resistance training into your own treatment plan for reversing fatty liver disease. It's also important to know that the research shows that all you really need to do in order to start to see an effect and improvement is to work out for at least 60 to 120 minutes per week. Literally 160 to 120 minutes per week. That's about 15 minutes a day. So with just 15 minutes a day, you can start reaping the benefits of these two forms 
of training, as well as combining it with the proper nutrition and even uh, other strategies like intermittent fasting. So that's it for today. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comment section if this helped you out or if you have any questions or if you would like me to put together a basic corrective exercise routine. Until then, talk to you next time.